In the next few minutes, I would like to share with you a real-world example of applying MassWorks software to a Thermo Fisher Scientific GC quadrupole system for accurate mass calibration and high spectral accuracy identification of unknown compounds and the determination of their elemental compositions. In order to achieve high enough mass accuracy and the required spectral accuracy, a new type of calibration has to be performed first. On a unit mass resolution system, this calibration requires the use of calibration standards with known elemental compositions. Fortunately for most GCMS systems, the PFTBA tuned gas is readily available and can be programmed within Thermo software to be turned on at the end of an otherwise typical GCMS run for one to two minutes so as to acquire the necessary calibration data within the same data acquisition. In this particular run, the unknown compounds come out before 25 minutes. The GC separation completes at 31 minutes and the PFTBA is then turned on for two minutes before the end of data acquisition at 35 minutes. The mass spec data need to be acquired in the raw profile mode. With true baseline acquired without the use of any ion threshold. Details of this experimental setup have been described in a newly released thermal application note on the subject. The multiple PFTBA fragments provide a perfect set of standard ions to capture the real peak shape function and cover the mass range of interest from 50 to 600 Daltons. I will now average many scans to get better signal to noise measurement and start the calibration process by going to the standard ions tab. Under the standard ions tab, the elemental compositions for each of the standard fragments are entered and associated with the corresponding mass spectral profile mode response. Notice that I use the whole measured isotope profile indicated by each shaded region for calibration, not just the peak top of the most abundant isotope, as is done in conventional MS instrument calibration. At this point, we are ready to go through the actual calibrations process, where a calibration filter can be calculated for each mass within this wide mass spectral range of interest. At the end of this calibration, on the calibration review report page, you can see the difference between the calibrated mass spectral data in red and the original mass spectral data in black. The calibrated mass spectral data would now not only have correct M over Z locations, but also have the correct peak shape function, which is mathematically definable and accurately expressible throughout the mass spectral range. This review page also shows the mass recovery and the spectral accuracy for each of the calibration ions in the table here. As you can see, the mass recovery is less than one millidalton in mass error, and the spectral accuracy is 99% or above, indicating that a good calibration has been obtained. Once a good calibration has been obtained, we can now move on to the analysis mode, where the unknowns at about 15.1 minutes and 10.1 minutes would be accurately determined in terms of M over Z to help with their final elemental compositions determination. For this unknown peak at 15.1 minutes, we again average across the RT window to get better signal to noise. The graph below here shows the average mass spectral data after applying MassWorks calibration. As you can see, there are quite a few EI fragments created and measured here. The largest ion, possibly the molecular ion, is located at 182 Daltons, whose accurate mass is now displayed to the fourth decimal point, but is accurate to the third decimal point, 
as 182.0345. While it is nice to determine the accurate mass location for this unknown ion using just a conventional GCMS system, it would be even better if we could get its formula or elemental composition to see how many carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, etc. may be involved. This is a capability typically reserved for the more expensive, higher resolution MS systems, but is now available to single or triple quad MS users, thanks to the special PFTBA calibration and the high spectral accuracy achievable on these systems. We can start the formula determination process by clicking on the accurate mass label here to bring up the CLIPS search dialog page. The accurate mass has been copied over here, and you typically search within plus or minus 15 or 20 millidaltons mass tolerance window, reflecting roughly three times the expected standard mass error of about five millidaltons. We can enter possible elements here from the whole periodic table for consideration. Notice that all of these elements can start from zero to allow for the possibility that some of these elements may be missing from the actual formula. If I click the search button, the software will now make a list of all possible formulas whose exact monoisotope masses fall within the 15 or 20 millidalton mass tolerance window of the measured accurate mass. There turns out to be a long list of 69 formula candidates. The question now is, which one of these 69 formulas is the correct formula, and how would we decide? This is where the concept of spectral accuracy comes into play. For each of these 69 candidate formulas, a theoretical mass spectrum could be accurately computed, conforming to the same peak shape function that the measured mass spectrum has been calibrated into. Each theoretical mass spectrum would then be compared to and overlaid with the calibrated mass spectrum of the unknown to arrive at a spectral accuracy metric, reflecting how closely matched they are to the unknown mass spectrum. MassWorks sorts these formula candidates based on their spectral accuracy from high to low. For example, the 57th candidate formula is N13, a legitimate formula based on accurate mass. When I click this particular row, we see a large spectral error on M plus 1 and M plus 2, and know immediately that this is not the right formula. In fact, the spectral accuracy is only about 89%, with about 11% spectral error. Going up the list, we see better and better spectral match and higher and higher spectral accuracy. The correct formula should provide a perfect spectral match with nearly 99% with nearly sorry 100% spectral accuracy subject only to a small random noise the top hit C6H14S3 was later confirmed to be the right formula after this blind test with nearly perfect spectral match and a spectral accuracy approaching 99% it is interesting to point out here that had I used a high-resolution accurate mass instrument for this unknown ID and sorted these formulas based on mass accuracy alone, which you can do by clicking the header here, none of the top hits would have resulted in the correct formula due to the lack of spectral accuracy. This shows how much more important spectral accuracy is compared to mass accuracy. Let's now move on to a different unknown compound at 10.1 minutes. This unknown compound has two prominent ions, one at 120 Daltons and the other a likely fragment at 105 Daltons, with a 15 Dalton difference between them. Not only could MassWorks software be used to analyze molecular ions, it could also be used to determine fragment ions. Here, if we perform a clip search on the 105 Dalton fragment ion,
it's very clear that the fragment elemental composition is C8H9, since the second hit would show a significant mismatch on the A plus 1 isotope, resulting in only 97% spectral accuracy. We can now move on to what appears to be the molecular ion at 120 Daltons. A clip search with odd numbers of electrons convincingly determines the correct elemental composition is C9H12, indicating that indeed there is a loss of functional group CH3 between the 120 Dalton molecular ion and its fragment ion at 105 Daltons. You may have noticed here that there may likely be an M-H ion created along with the molecular ion at 120 Daltons during the EI process. This creates a mutually overlapping mixture here in this spectral region covering 119 and 120 Daltons. Such a mixture is created inside the EI source and is chromatographically inseparable. The special massworks calibration process and the concept of spectral accuracy can, however, help resolve the mixture here through exact mathematical separation or deconvolution. Here is how I will go about doing this. On the CLIPS search page, I indicate the possibility for the loss of a hydrogen atom. I extend the profile mass range to start from negative 1.5 Daltons instead of negative 0.5 Daltons relative to the monoisotope mass and perform the clip search again. We see the same correct C9H12 on top of the list with high 99% spectral accuracy. If I click this formula row here, you can see that the theoretical spectral match is now calculated with the minus H region included. More interestingly, if I move the mouse over this row, it shows the relative concentration of 80% to 20% between the M and M minus H ions, allowing for quantitative analysis of ions with mutually overlapping mass spectral signals. This concludes the MassWorks software demo, and I hope you have seen it working simply and easily on an otherwise conventional quadruple MS system for accurate mass formula determination of either the molecular or fragment ions, even in the presence of a mass spectral overlap such as those between the M and M minus H ions. I would like to invite you to check out a newly released thermal application note on the use of MassWorks software to aid in the challenging library search of co-eluding compounds.